Hello, hello everyone and welcome to the AWS Nordics office hours and this very special edition of it. It's that time of year again when we are going to talk about the AWS Summit in Stockholm. And as usual, when we're talking the summit, I have lots and lots of guests with me as well. My name is Gunnar Grosch. I'm a developer advocate at AWS based in Sweden. So the Stockholm Summit is my home turf, really. So let's do the quick round of introductions before jumping into the topic of the summit. So let's start off with you, Bastian. Welcome. Hi, thank you for, for, for having me. Uh, my name is Bastian Töpfer. I'm a solutions architect in the telco industry. I'm also based in Sweden, so happy to be part of this. Niklas. Niklas Jötberg. I am a solutions architect at AWS for Games, also based in Sweden. Hector, then, next. Yep, probably I can go next. My name is Hector Ibarra, principal solution architect. I'm a little bit uh, back to the south, uh, based in Berlin, Germany. Hello, I'm Fredosi, and I'm solutions architect as well, based out of Stockholm, and I support our enterprise segment of customers in the Nordics. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Mojga Mahdu. I'm also a solution architect covering enterprise segment and working mainly with our manufacturing customer, based in Stockholm as well. All right, so welcome all of you for and thanks for joining today where we're going to talk about AWS Summit Stockholm. And to start things off, well, let me bring up my screen. So the AWS Summit Stockholm, it's happening same date this year as last year, so May 11th. Uh, so we are about two and a half weeks out from the summit now. And if you haven't already, well, it is high time for you to register for the summit. So scan the QR code on screen or type in that super simple uh, URL and then register for the summit. So st to start things off, well, what is an AWS summit? And maybe I should throw that question out to my guest. So uh, most of you, if not all, have been to summits before. I think all of you have been been part of AWS summits before. So uh, Bastian, maybe, can you tell people a bit about what AWS summit is? Absolutely. I mean, it's, 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 it's a big event where our customers get together and learn about what we, uh, what, what, what you can do on AWS. I mean, I can still fondly remember my first time as a, on the summit as a customer. Being a co-speaker at one of the events was, was the most nervous night of my life before. That was, was super fun. So you get to learn about what we do. You get to know what our customers do. It's a fantastic event to, uh, to, to network and learn new things. And how many AWS summits have you been to now, Bastian? Oh, this is my third now. And second as an employee, right? That's correct. Yes. I can also add something maybe. Um, I also, uh, you know, uh, with the summit, we also have our customers. So what happens is like you also get to meet definitely uh, amazing customers from all around the region, but also a lot of experts that we have from AWS really come from various different locations. So you get to meet them. So I also see this as a very wonderful opportunity to really meet people, great people and, you know, uh, a network, I would say. Yeah, I think that's a big part of it as well. And and we see that, I think, every year that people come not only to see technical sessions, to, to visit the expo, they come to meet other AWS experts, other customers, and so on. Just that uh, that part of the summit, I think, is super important compared to many of the perhaps virtual events that people yeah. are used to attending now as well. So I want to bring... A yeah, go ahead. Opportunity. There's also a great opportunity to meet our partners, right? Because they typically are there and where we can enhance not only talk about what AWS can offer, but also our partner teams, what they can offer and how they can help customers. Yeah, I think that's a super important part of it as well. So uh, we have partners in the expo, of course, that are there to showcase what they're doing and how they can help uh, AWS customers. Moskan. Yes. I think you wanted to add something. <laughs> No, 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 no. I think everything is covered because for, for me also, it's all about the customer partners, innovation, and then, uh, yeah, the, the sessions. So. 
Exactly. So let me bring up the screen to just show people uh, what the agenda for the summit looks like. So um, you get there early in the morning to start out to then get your badge to register and make sure that you're all set. And hopefully you have all registered in advance so that you are just set to get your badge. Then we start out with a keynote. And the keynote this year is one that I'm very much looking forward to. Uh, we have an exciting keynote this year. Well, we, we always have exciting keynotes. We did that last year as well. But this year, um, I think um, what I'm very much looking forward to is the keynote from Holly Miss Robian. Uh, she's the vice president for service compute at AWS uh, Web Services. And she's going to talk about um, the developer experience, uh, basically, and how you can build on AWS as a developer or a a builder. So that's something that I'm very much looking forward to. And then, of course, we will also hear from Maria Lindgren. She's the managing director of AWS for Benelux and the Nordics. And we also have customer participation in the keynote, as usual. So we have uh, customers from Northvolt, AstraZeneca, and Nova Nordisk this year taking part in the keynote. And the keynote usually is a good kickstart uh, of the day to get people, I guess, hyped up for what is to come all throughout the day. So have you all attended keynotes at the summit before? Or not as AWS employees, maybe. Uh, I did it. I did it. Actually, the first keynote that I was was in the Berlin Summit in 2017. And Werner Wolha was here in the keynote. So it was pretty inspirational to uh, listen to him and see him in action for the first time. That's always inspiring. Yes, uh, I can totally agree on that. So then after the keynote, well, that's your first opportunity to to well, browse around in the expo, basically, to have a look at all of the things that are happening all throughout the expo. And then for the rest of the day, it is a, a switch between different sessions, breakout sessions, and activities in the expo all throughout that you can then enjoy. And I want to then jump into some of the specifics that are happening at the summit this year and Niklas I think we're going to start with you to right. let you talk about what you are doing at the summit this year awesome yes so I'm going to be um running what we call AWS game day um it's a um if you haven't experienced AWS game day yet it's not um a workshop or a lab it's a more of an interactive way where you can work as a team to learn and experience AWS you know, services or um, other areas of AWS in a gamified way, but still working in a safe and risk-free environment. Um, in the specific game that we're running on, on uh, AWS Summit, there will be four quests for you to solve. You can call it four missions or four areas that you need to kind of come together as a team to kind of solve those type of problems. And there's not a scripted, you know, one way of doing that. It's actually different ways, paths for you to solve that problem. So you can be pretty creative, uh, do some clever ways on how to kind of gain those points. Uh, we're doing this game day in uh, together with our partner, Formula One, um, which is something we did last year at Summit as well. Um, and it's uh, this year is brand new content. So if you were at the summit last year and did this game day, it would not be the same game day. It would be a new game day. Um, and it's also based out of real data. Um, this is pretty exciting if you're a Formula One fan, but it's also pretty, pretty great. and makes the game day a bit more interesting, I think, that actually we do in real world data when uh, we're running this game day. Um, and um, the session last year, we did uh, sort of kind of like a um, come as you go. Uh, this, the, uh, the task you have or the time you have to solve this task are 90 minutes. Uh, last year, we, we sort of kind of, you can drop in kind of thing. This year, we would do three individual sessions, heats, starting times, 
depending if you're you know formula one fan or not you will sort of kind of do a lap um in three different times 10 45 uh 13 45 or 15 20 are the session times so make sure you register for those um in advance or uh if there are time slots available or time or tables available you can join um it is bring your own laptop so make sure you do that if for some reason you forget your laptop or something come and see us and we can see what we can do uh, we run this in teams of two to four, uh, minimum of two, maximum of four. Um, if you are sort of kind of having maybe your friends or, you know, doing sessions or something, you can still drop by and we're trying to pair you with others that are also uh, maybe without a, um, a teammate for this one. So you can still come and play. Um, we do have some great prizes this year as well. Um, and uh, we will announce a winner out of those three sessions. So we have one winner for the day. That winner will move on to a final event, and then you have the chance to win a ticket to go to a Formula One event, which is uh, pretty awesome. That is pretty uh, awesome. We have a question for you in the in the chat. Uh, sure. Class. Can we have Gunnar on our team is the question. <laughs> That is difficult for me to answer. And uh, <laughs> um, it, was, it was kind of, you know, going from a, you know amateur competition to a pro, which is might not be allowed, but, you know, <laughs> um, I actually played this event myself with a couple of uh, colleagues um, and the other week. And uh, it's actually quite fun. And uh, even though I, I work in the console almost every day or in AWS every day, I still were some challenges that I uh, have to think about. So it's, um, I think if you want to come and, and, you know, challenge yourself or, you know, compare yourself against others, then you should definitely try one of these sessions. Awesome. And I'm going to put on our very exciting sizzle reel for the F1 Game Day League as well. Um, just so people get a sense of, of well, the excitement around the game day F1 league. So let's go. Very cool. So yeah, the people who know me, they know that I love game days. I've been involved in in one or two game days throughout the years. Uh, so this is definitely one of the highlights on each summit, in my opinion, uh, taking part in game days. And I think you touched on the very key part of it initially, that it is not like a workshop. Um, you don't follow instructions uh, step by step on how to do things. You, you are basically tasked with doing something and then it's up to you on the team to, to find out how to do it. And I think that is super exciting with game days. Um, maybe a question to you, Nicholas, like, is this something uh, walk-in or do people have to register, teams register beforehand before joining in? How would you save the mode? I think if you want to secure your spot, uh, you probably should pre-register. Um, and you know, otherwise, just come by, and we will see if there is an open table for you at those starting times that I, that I showed here on the slide. Um, you know, uh, hopefully, I will see um, you all there. Very cool. Thank you very much, Niklas. So. I want to switch over to perhaps uh, one of the, the core parts of each summit, and that is the breakout sessions. So for the people who have attended the summits before, you know that technical breakout sessions is one of the key parts of it. So I want to switch over and show the agenda of the builder and developer tracks. Um, and I think I say this every year, but I think this year we have a super exciting agenda. Uh, with 
technical sessions that are a good fit for people of any type of persona or role you are in, you will be able to find content that fits you well. And well, there's a lot to take in on the screen right now. So to help us with that, I think I'm gonna make my guests talk a bit about their sessions. That makes it a bit easier. So let me start from uh, the Mr. at the bottom, Hector. Tell us a bit about your session this year. Uh, and maybe you can even say where we find it on the agenda with all of these sessions. Absolutely. So the, the session is uh, digital supply chain marketplaces and as a question mark, a game changer, right? You will see them in calls uh, seven, uh, starting at uh, 325. Um, so um what is all about this session the session is all about supply chain this these days uh, the supply chain is something that it's driving uh, i don't want to say crazy but it's almost crazy to almost all, all enterprise right there are multiple challenges or challenges in the sense on customers are changing the way that they behave all the time but also there are some contextual things that are happening like government wars uh, also what we have a couple of years ago the corona part right uh, and and at the end what is causing is a lot of disruptions and when we have those disruptions the the way to handle from the supply chain those disruption is to start using multiple solutions that at the end each solution is going to be specialized in a specific given area like for example we may have a solution which specifically tracks ocean right or aircraft uh, shippings right uh, and, and the challenge starts for customers when they are having multiple solutions, which also includes their own ERP or also their own warehouse management system or trans transportation logistics systems. And they need to start uh, dealing with all those vendors at the same time. And it's even more challenging if the companies are big enough where they have multiple divisions. So try to imagine that you have probably 10, 12, different vendors providing specific solutions for each of the areas that I mentioned before. And within that one, you have four, six, seven, eight divisions within the company. How you are going to manage all those vendors in a way that you can concentrate your effort in doing all the contract negotiations once at a time, that you can concentrate the governance of that one so then everything can be still under control. And also, that you can consolidate the billing all of those vendors. And this is basically how AWS Marketplace can help this type of uh, customers with this type of problems to solve the problem itself. What we're going to go through the session uh, is all about these phases that I mentioned. So from the value proposition itself, how the procurement may get the benefit of this one, but also how, for example, the different business units can gain agility by being able to deploy these solutions faster, right? Because they don't need to go through all the contract negotiations again, through all the governance again, which typically takes a, a lot of time, right? And this is what uh, we're going to cover in this session. Very cool. And did you mention your, your co-speaker, Hector? I do have a co-speaker. I'm very, very grateful to have Marina Buchhardt. She's also a solution architect. She's based also here in Berlin. So we're going to deliver this session together. And, and I hope that everything's going to be fine. And also we're going to have fun with all of you. Very cool. So then on the topic of supply chains, you talked about the digital supply chain marketplaces. We have uh, Fidoosi. You also have supply chain in the title of your session so maybe yes. it's, it's yes, a natural definitely. step to go over to you then <laughs> yeah i was just listening to you hector and uh, you very rightly mentioned about the disruptions that we have really seen in the supply chain in the last two years during covid 19 but then with the war tensions and now inflation I mean, we all agree that supply chain is something really helps us get what we want and when we want them, like, you know, the clothes we are wearing today, the food we eat, right? But uh, I mean, uh, my, my, especially my session, what it talks about is that, so first of all, um, let me tell you like this, like if you remember this infamous toilet paper crisis that happened during COVID-19, I guess we all remember here, right? where there was this like sudden surge in demand of toilet paper and then you know all the companies had faced an issue to meet that demand and so on 
and we also had like a demand surge uh, with the we also had this demand drop for example you know the airlines travel dropped by more than 95 percent so what happens is like when these kind of a sudden change in demand happens companies really are not adapt to them very quickly because they don't have this comprehensive visibility of their inventory across their supply chain network and then they don't have the insights to really respond to them faster so in my session, I really talk about our newly launched AWS supply chain solution, which was launched just last year in 2022, where what we do is basically help you unify the data across all of your supply chain systems, warehouse management systems like ERPs and so on, to really unify all those data. And then on top of that, we provide like a value of machine learning powered insights to really know where your inventory is, but also to understand where you should act and how you should act. And this can really help uh, our customers, you know, to mitigate the risk faster, but also lower the cost of their, of their management of supply chain and eventually, you know, serve their customers better. And I really have this cool demo of end-to-end -end product showing you how you can do that in just a few minutes. So I will really encourage you to join me on in hall number four at 15.25 again. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, but uh, that's uh, where I'll be basically talking about the solution. All right, so competing sessions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so then uh, thank you for that, Firdousi. Morshkan, are you also talking about supply chain? No, no. I think we have a lot of <laughs> session already covering supply chain, but it is important. But I'm covering another domain, which is AI, uh, AI ML and ML, which we have, uh, I think, more than five, six sessions covering that area. And, and my session is one of them. Of course, I'm co-presenting co the session with one of the developer advocates, one of your colleagues now, uh, Sohan Maheshwar. And the title is Build and Deploy a Live ML Powered Music Genre Classifier. So what we are going to cover is that first, Silhan will show you how to build a machine learning model using Amazon SageMaker to classify music genre using the existing data set that is available to everyone. And then I will walk you through how to deploy that model using serverless infer inf inference and then make that available via API where you can like access it uh, through any mobile or, or web, web application basically. And of course the fun part is that you do not need to be ML expert to enjoy the session or learn something from the session. And also you can like, uh, we, we will give, uh, provide you with the code so you can like uh, play with it and uh, after the summit and, and gain more expertise. So the session ID is AAM 304. It will be in hall two at one of the last session of the day. So it will be starting at 4.20 PM. And uh, it, will, it will basically cover two different personas. So how ML engineer will train and, and uh, create and deploy, uh, uh, create a model and provide it for the like uh, developer. And then where the developer take that and then uh, product, productify it and then make it available for the customer. Cool, and I've seen this session um... So I know that it is a very hands-on session. You yes. are basically building all throughout, which I think is really cool for the audience to see it actually in practice. Not saying that slides are wrong. I'm just saying that it's fun to see people build stuff. For sure. Yeah, we will show how easy is it. Like you only need one hour and, and like a couple of AWS services to build a model and run it. Yeah. Very cool. All right. So since we're on the topic of sessions, I guess I have to plug my own session as well. So uh, this isn't overlapping with any of the other three we've heard about. So you can join mine as well. I am talking about one of my favorite uh, my favorite topics, which is resilience. So I'm talking about how to use different patterns and practices for, for building resilient applications. Uh, we know that resilience is a very important topic, making sure that the things we build and, and let our customers use, that it actually is working. So I'm going to walk you through different types of patterns that you can use to then make sure that your application is as resilient as possible to 
to failures so that your application is fault tolerant and that it's highly available. And one of the important things is to make sure that your application is able to then adapt to these different conditions and environments that it's put through. Um, and of course, I'm also going to show a bit of chaos engineering like I often do in my sessions. So if you want to see that session, well, join me in Hall 5 at 125, 1325. So that would be the first session after lunch, I believe. And yes, Soul Stranger, I do love chaos engineering. That is definitely one of my favorite topics. Will this be slides, Gunnar, or will this be demos? This will be a mix, um, I will say. So I'm going to use to show some patterns and so on. I need to use different slides to show architectural patterns. But it's also it also involves a few demos to actually show things in practice. And then finally using chaos engineering to make sure that those patterns actually work as well. So hopefully it will be enjoyable for the audience. All right, so we've talked about some of the sessions that we have on the agenda, but I think it's time to talk about some of the other stuff that's happening as well. And then, Bastian, since you raised your voice, I think it's time to move over to you and let you tell us a bit about what's happening. With my session, or with my session, well, it's, it's, it's not so much a session. This is uh, three workshops that we're going to have. The topic is uh, building a sustainable hydroponic solution at home. This is really a session for builders, a hands-on session, where we will show you how to create a hydroponic solution uh, DIY style powered by AWS. So what's hydroponics? Just so everybody's on the same boat. It's a method to grow, uh, to grow crops in, uh, in a water-based solution that is enriched with nutrients. And some of the benefits, uh, again, here the topic is sustainability paired with technology, so use technology for good. Uh, some of the benefits with uh, hydroponics are that you don't need quality soil, you can grow crops faster, which is better for, well, you need food for, 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 for the world population. Um, it uses a lot less space, uh, you can extend grow, uh, the growing season, or you can even grow indoors, because this is a, a, a growing technique that is really good for that. Uh, you need less water, even though it's water-based, you need less water because the, the, the plants take exactly the water that you need. You need less uh, pesticides, if any. You can also grow inside and you don't have any. And you know, no weeding, no herbicides. So it's a real sustainable way of growing crops. And we're going to show you how to do that at home. So how, how do we bring AWS into the picture? Well, we'll show you how you can monitor the vitals of your plant. So what's the temperature in the water? Uh, is the nutrition level correct? Um, you can control the water flow of the, of the hydroponic solutions, the water that's pumped through, through the system. Uh, you'll, you'll control it through, through AWS. Uh, you can monitor it through AWS and get a really nice uh, representation, a digital twin within I, uh, AWS IoT Twin Maker. So this is a really cool way to test something that you do at home. And uh, we hope that you try that out with your kids at home, because this it's all low code stuff. You do that at home, test it and interest and, and get your kids excited about technology. That's our hope here. But obviously, this is great for, for, for adults. Just do it yourself. So um, the key outcomes that we see here is, uh, well, that you learn this. You can do just do, you can do that your, uh, at home yourself. Uh, grow some uh, nice, juicy uh, vegetables at home um, the, uh, the, the whole year round. And the other part is once you learn how you connect IoT devices or extensions of IoT of, of anything with an IoT device into AWS, through, for example, through uh, digital twins, you can do that for any other use case as well, right? I mean, you may, may be doing that for smart manufacturing, for home automation, fleet management, uh, electrical grid uh, monitoring, you name it, right? I mean, this is, this is kind of what we offer here for you to learn. Um, Gunnar, I think you also have a video that we can play maybe to just to give, give some, some, some more inspiration what this is going to be about. Let's do it.
that that was very cool. So is that what people are going to do in in this these is exactly what we're, gonna, what we're gonna be doing in this in this session i mean obviously we have 90 minutes so we have prepared the electronics uh, all of that is uh, there's no soldering requ required during that session we have all of that ready plug and play uh, what people will do is they will connect uh, the sensors they will uh, they will add them into the water they will then program the iot device to actually measure this and send it up to the cloud and they will configure iot uh, sidewise and iot uh, twin maker to actually uh, mirror your or, or yeah to, to get this uh, create this digital twin of the hydroponic solution very cool what's that the m5 stack uh, iot that's device that's correct exactly oh, that's cool. it's a super cool tool for uh, to, to learn to code uh in a tangible way right i mean this is this especially when you when you when you teach we, we actually run this with an initiative that's called builder builder where we uh, where we teach kids to code and we use this device with a sensor so they can you know they can get a feel for how, what technology is like without all of the hassle in the mean in in the middle where somebody has to look up how to how to write the code to simply read uh, the measurement from a uh, from a uh, gpio so in this case it's just plug and play and you saw saw in the video as well that we have this nice kind of scratch like interface where you can actually program the the, the device and interface so you take away that uh, that 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 hassle and comparing this to Niklas game days then where uh, where you perhaps don't know exactly what to do to solve. I'm hoping in this case that you actually get instructions, right? <laughs> yes, yes, it, 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 you have to get instructions. I mean, what we're doing here in this case, I mean, you saw in the video in the end as well, right? We have a, a real nice uh, 3D version of that uh, hydroponic solution. To do all of that completely freely is a little bit tough. So we, we have instructions, we have we have help here. But you also don't do this alone. You will do this in a team. I mean, you're not going to be alone in front of this uh, in, in in front of your little hydroponic solution. You will be working in teams of three, uh, where there is team team uh, team collaboration is required uh, to 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 get uh, get the solution up and running in that time. And how do people join it? Uh, people walk up. Uh, this is this uh, register for the summit, and then you walk up. First come, first serve. The important thing is that you bring a laptop to this uh, to the session, and then we'll get going as soon as you arrive at this. We have three sessions. Um, we have the first one. Let me just get up here. The, we have the first one at ten forty-five until twelve twenty-five. The second one is is thirteen twenty-five to fifteen oh five. And the last one, 1525 to 1705, is all in K24. I'm going to post that in the chat as well so people can find it there. Very cool. Just one thing, I guess, we we'll, I need to add because it, it is called sustainability hackathon. Yes, that's how they will find it. It was in that's the slide, correct. but yeah. Correct. And it's, in, it, it's under the category IoT. All right. So uh, thank you, Bastian, for that. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how people manage in that hackathon. I'm definitely going to check it out throughout the day. So next, then, I want to mention one of my favorite parts of the AWS Summit every year, and that is the AWS Community Lounge. So the Community Lounge is one of the areas in the expo that is entirely for the AWS community. So in this area, we'll have a welcome desk where you can learn more about the AWS community, how to get involved, how or what it actually means with the user groups that are spread out across not only the Nordics, but the entire world, how you can get involved, how you can learn more through the AWS community. And throughout the day we will have community sessions i'm going to show them in just a little bit and uh, we'll also have a couple of demo pods where you can see interesting demos from the community and from developer relations it will be staffed by members of the community alongside some of the aws community managers that we have um, and there are stickers and stuff question from uh, Kater, Carter, how do I get the stickers though? Well, first off, you have to be in Stockholm for the AWS Stockholm Summit. That's step one. Step two is to get to the community lounge as quickly as possible. We know that stickers are 
usually the first thing that people are there for. So find the community lounge, find the stickers. So let me just show you the agenda of the sessions that we have. So like I mentioned, five different community sessions. Um, and these are by not AWS speakers. These are community speakers. So these are people who are uh, part of the AWS community in different ways, uh, either by running community user groups or by being part of one of the community programs that we have, or simply by being an AWS community member. They are part of one of the user groups, perhaps. So we have a session, first off, on keeping data secure uh, by Anders Björnestad and Francisco from Norway. We have a session from ESAN from, uh, based in Finland, um, talking about computer vision apps on the edge using AWS Panorama. We have Mika von Seen, also from Finland, and uh, talking about AWS IoT Greengrass and things he learned by putting that into use. Then we have Kennedy from Germany, from the AWS community in Germany, talking about security chaos engineering topic I'm super excited for, of course. Uh, and then we have one of our local Swedish AWS heroes, Anrag, to talk about uh, how you can build a serverless data lake platform. So those are the five sessions we have. So do check those out. Uh, all right. And we see that, Carter, it might be a bit far from Australia to get the stickers. But yeah, maybe one day you will and join the summit in Stockholm and get some stickers. I promise to, to keep some for you. OK, so that was the community lounge. And now, Moskan, I think it's back to you to talk about another thing that you're involved in. You're involved in multiple things at the summit. Yes, so. which one? OK, I will, well, I will, go. <laughs> I will choose. Yeah, <laughs> you can just pick one. Pick one. Yeah, sure. Well, I would like to talk about Ask an Expert, which I'm I'm heavily involved uh, handling the booths and everything. So, so it, this is the second year, of course, that I'm, I'm uh, working or, or organizing the Oscan Expert. Uh, it is in the main expo at the very end uh, in front of uh, Keynote Hall. It will be running the whole day. So from the morning be right, uh, right after the registration to the very uh, last session, it will be manned with AWS Expert. This is the place for all the builders, developers, architects, community members, welcome as well, to come and meet with AWS experts like Solution Architect, like myself, Ferdosi, Hector, Bastian, everyone here, Nicholas as well, and then uh, get answer to your specific question. So uh, whatever that your question is, if, if it's very generic, 100 level, or very, very deep dive specific to any service, any domain, this is the right place to come and get answer to. We will have different specialists and subject matter experts covering topics like AIML, analytics, security, IoT, even SAP on AWS, or this more maybe niche topics, and, and uh, of course, any, anything else. You don't need to book it in advance. You can just drop by in between all other activities that you have and then come to the booth and get your chance to have a one-on-one -on -one session with one of our experts. I think that would be like the, the way that we work for, for some of you, are, you already might know. So, so some of our customers already have access to a dedicated estate, but some individuals or, or other customers who are a little maybe new to AWS, they don't have this chance. So this is, this is your chance to come and get connected, basically. I think uh, throughout the years, one of the most visited part of the AWS Summit is definitely Ask an Expert, or I think it was called Ask an Architect yes, in the beginning, last, but yeah. now it's more than just architects. It is experts in, in different fields. Um, always very popular among attendees. And like you said, it's it's a chance to get those questions answered on a one-to-one -one basis with, with an AWS expert. Yes. So either they can bring like their architectural sketch, or even last year we had some customer bringing in the laptop and then accessing to AWS account to just troubleshoot whatever that they were building. Hmm. So whatever that is your question, just drop by. Very cool. All right. Um, and then Moskan, well, let's continue with your, I guess your third thing at the summit. Yes. So as I mentioned, I'm, I'm 
covering our manufacturing domain and that's why like uh, this is also very exciting part for me so this year as well like last year we will have aws village co-placed with innovation corner where you can go and meet our domain expert uh, get to know our product uh, services and solutions but then this year what we added to, to aws village is a booth specific to manufacturing and, and industrial customers so it's called aws for industry uh, at aws for the ones who doesn't know we have most conversive set up services and solutions for industrial use cases like predictive maintenance supply chain management which we will have two talks at least about it during the summit a smart product asset optimization and much more so if you're working with uh, in manufacturing area and then you're interested to learn more about this industrial specific offering or see some cool demos this is the right place to, to go and visit. So we will have some demos, especially covering like AWS Monitron, Greengrass, Sitewise, TuneMaker, and look, look out for Vision. And I myself, I'm very excited about seeing AWS Monitron because this will be the first time for me the, seeing this little orange sensors in, in, in person, basically. I know Nicholas worked with them before a lot with their customer, with his customer, but uh, this is the first time for me. Very cool. All right. So we have a question uh, or two questions in the chat about if these things that are happening at the summit will be made available remote or digital. And um, at the summit, we don't have any live stream from the Stockholm summit this year. Uh, that might be something that we can add uh, future summits, um, hopefully. Some of the EMEA summits are being broadcasted or they have things happening on Twitch at the same time. Uh, but we don't have that in Stockholm this year, but maybe for the future. Some of the sessions will also be recorded and be made available on YouTube afterwards. So keep a lookout for that as well if there are sessions that you want to see that could potentially be available on YouTube afterwards. I can add one thing. I mean, this is not directly related to Summit, but we will. We are, we are working on having a, a AWS Experience Center soon. And then as a part of that, we will have a, some sort of virtual Ask an Expert, mm -hmm. which will be available on our website. And whenever that you want, you can go and just book a time slot with a solution architect, and then you can get your session. I think that's great. Yes. And yeah. uh, in terms of sessions that you want to see, if you're unable to join the summit or if there's clashes, do let us know and um, feel free to, to contact me any way you wish. And we can do our best to try to, to make sure to reuse those sessions at other events and so on and make them available for you, either virtual or in other in-person events so that you are able to, to then see those sessions. Okay, so we are well. We are quickly approaching top of the hour. So uh, before we we leave for this session, I want to take uh, well go through all of you and just hear what is most exciting uh, for the summit for you. Just um, tell us about what you're looking most forward to uh, for the summit. So Bastian, let's start with you again. <laughs> All right. Well, number one is what I already said earlier, right? I mean, Summit is a place to meet. Uh, it's, 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 it's a place to meet uh, partners and customers. I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of my customers that I talk to on a daily basis, often uh, often through conferencing call uh, tools, right? Uh, seeing them in person is just a different thing. So I'm really looking forward to that. When it comes to sessions, I mean, if I wouldn't be running my own session, so now, uh, now, now, uh, Soul Stranger and Binary Monk, uh, your questions are absolutely great, right? I mean, I would love to see the recordings of that. So the two sessions that I'm excited about that I would love to see is number one, DOP 301. So how to implement the ideal blueprint for CI, CD pipelines with Amazon Code Catalyst. Code Catalyst is something that I think is really, really exciting. It's something that, uh, that everybody should just give a spin. Uh, and the other topic is a very, very hot topic. It's something that, that I think... Uh, is good for us, uh, good, good for, for us to talk to our customers about, good for our customers to learn about, that is the possibilities of generative AI on AWS. We have a session on that as well, which is STP 108. All right, thank you, Bastian. Um, Niklas, what are you looking forward to? 
Yes, uh, I gotta gotta do a lot of plus ones here, and uh, I've been to summits both as a customer and also, of course, on as an AWS representatives a couple of different times, and just being part of the atmosphere, hearing all the cool stuff that our customers create on on AWS, it's it's amazing. And I remember both when I was a customer, I got some really good ideas on how to solve my own problems just interacting with other customers at the summit. And if I wasn't, you know, actually going and running the game there this year, I would definitely join that sustainability hackathon. Playing with IoT devices is something I do a lot at home. So I would definitely do that one. I like to get hands on with things. And so I would seek out those sessions, but you know, there's still a lot of good sessions in there, but that's the one I probably would have been most excited about, but yeah. Um, yeah. Sounds good. Hector. Um, I have to say a lot of plus ones also for things that were already said, right? But I will I will focus into one. Um, one thing that I enjoy a lot in the summit is the opportunity to be with customers and to talk, not only me talking with customers or they talking to me, but also customers to customers conversations, right? When we have the opportunity to, for example, someone said, oh, listen, I am thinking in on SAP migration and someone else did that SAP migration before, for example, and then we can join those two customers and, and share a coffee, talk about the experience very openly, what went, wrong, what, went, uh, what went right, what went wrong. So then customers are learning directly from experience from other customers. I think this is super nice and super interesting. And also it's a great experience to learn for me, right? So I, I really enjoy that part a lot. Thank you. Good see. Yeah, uh, yes, for me, my favorite part of the summit is really ask an expert. I really enjoy the aura that you get by going into that area. So many ideas, so many brainstorming happening, just like ad hoc, like Mozgan mentioned. So I'm really uh, excited to meet you there, talk to you about any kinds of suggestions or problems that you want to discuss. Uh, but apart from that, uh, there's also well, this very interesting demo uh, we have. We have a booth called SAP on AWS. And um, there we have this a very interesting demo. There's this like refrigerator uh, that you see in the convenience stores or in your grocery market. And then we have connected IoT sensors. Again, it's IoT demo, so tangible. So we have connected IoT sensors to really measure the temperature and uh, you know the distance uh, uh, distance sensor to see if the door is open of the refrigerator and so on. And then what we are doing is we are connecting these IoT sensors to SAP, uh, IoT uh, core on AWS and eventually with SAP. So to show you how you can really do predictive maintenance of this uh, refrigerators and so on also by not just through AWS, but also by connecting your SAP system. So I think it's super cool demo to be able to see that. So I will really encourage you to go and have a look at that one. Um, yeah, I mean, there are so many interesting ones, like everybody said here. I don't know. I always feel there's like less time and much more things to do. So, yeah. Uh, yes, true, for sure. And much come. Yeah, like uh, like Aurora mentioned, first is, of course, I'm going to meet some of my customer, which I've mm -hmm. never seen them in person, just virtual for the last one or two years. So that's really exciting. But more than that, two sessions, except mine, uh, I would like to attend for those section. Actually, I'm, I'm really interested to know about this about the supply chain service because this is the first time I'm seeing the demo of that service. It was just released in reInvent that last year. And then there will be another session, which is, uh, which is uh, not with AWS people. It, it's a partner-led session. Uh, no, it's plus one of my customer, the Laval or Tetra Pak, when they will talk about what they did with IoT Greengrass to basically, the way that I would like to say it is like predictive maintenance for cows. So this would be a really cool session. I would recommend that as well. So to anyone who, who is interested in it. But I don't know actually where is it located. I think it should be in the partner session, but just check the agenda. Yeah, I think that's for that. I would say that's the safe bet. All right, yeah. thank you. So for me, uh, there are a bunch of sessions that I would like to attend. I don't think uh, I'll have time to attend sessions, but I would definitely try to follow the three 
architectural sessions that are first of uh, ARC 301, best practices for creating multi-region architectures on AWS, then my resilience session after that, uh, obviously, and then the SaaS architecture patterns session as well. So with that, you'll have a lot of uh, architectural knowledge and patterns to use when you're building on AWS. Besides that, there are three awesome serverless sessions as well that I think you should try to join um, where you can learn how to build uh, modern applications using serverless, using event-driven architectures, um, and using serverless workflows. So I think those are cool sessions as well for developers and builders out there. And then finally, attend the community lounge. Just go there, hang out with community members, and get to know more people in the AWS community. I think that's a great way to spend time at the summit as well, even though you should, of course, visit everything at the summit if you're able to. OK, so with that, I think it's time to wrap up. I want to thank all of my guests for joining today. Thanks for everyone watching as well. This has been a special episode of AWS Nordic's Office Hours, where we have talked about the upcoming AWS Summit in Stockholm. The summit is happening on May 11th. Um, and if you are able to get to Stockholm on May 11th, well, make sure to join the summit. It's free. You can register now and just attend and have a great day there. So to all my guests, thank you very much for joining. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. All Bye. right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.